Hey guys, what's up tonight? Um, I'm going to do a review of The Dentist for the Scat House of Doom. This is Jay Widow 91 And uh, this and The Dentist is about a successful and rich um, doc dentist named um, Dr. Alan Feinstone. He's just the kind of guy in LA that that basically has it all. He has a wonderful office that's, you know, he has lots of business at. He has a great reputation. He's like, you know, the greatest dentist. He's like one of the greatest dentists that, you know, you could ever have. He has a beautiful wife. The, their marriage seems to be excellent. But as um, we begin the movie, we learn that not everything's perfect about him, that he wants people to believe. He finds his wife basically sucking this douchebag's cock. And this guy is just a fucking guy who would pick on you in high school. He's got the fucking stupid tan, stupid tattoos, and his fucking big hunky muscles. He's just the kind of guy that you just want to slap across the fucking face. And um, he's always been pretty insane. But like right then and there, that pretty much, you know, that pretty much just breaks him into just, you know, a whole new world of insanity. He starts seeing shit that's not really there. He, you know, of course, you know, he's hallucinating. Um, he gets even angrier than he already was. He, you know, his anger problem just totally you know, burst through the fucking roof. He finds out that the fucking pool guy is also fucking um, his wife's um, best friend and her neighbor. So that takes him off even more. So he shoots her, so he shoots her fucking dog. And that's basically, um, and from then there, they're like the cop, that's when, um, the cop starts. The cop starts searching for him, and after that, he just gets even more sadistic as the movie goes along. Um, he uh, just as you seen that scene, he uh, tortures some little kid because he's hallucinating. He saw like fucking weird teeth in his mouth. But of course, the kid teeth were fine. Um, his his fellow employees start just taking him off because they're not doing shit the way he wants them done, which just it makes him even more crazier. Just you know, going down the road of insanity. Um, there's one part where, like, he's a loose, he's, like, um, taking care of this, um, pretty model. Um, she's, she's on so high on laughing gas that, um, she starts grabbing his dick. And, like, he thinks that his wife is there because he's hallucinating again. And so he starts choking her out. And he almost kills her, but then until she, like, wakes up and everything's fine. And then she goes to her client and, like, her, um... Her manager just starts beating the shit out of him. So, and then after that, um, it's in on top of all that, this is not his day. Um, he's in trouble with the IRS. Um, of course, he got the beat, he got the shit beat of him, is with his, he got the model beat the shit out of him. I'm sorry, I can't fucking talk. I'm just, I'm just babbling at the moment. Um, IRS is after him, of course. On his anniversary, on their anniversary, his wife cheats on him. And they and they're going to a dinner tonight. And that's when he fully snaps. He he um he's got all these rooms that are like themed rooms. He wants just, you know, the perfect he wants a perfect dentist office where you're like, you know, you're totally comfortable at a you know, at a dentist. He just he wants to get rid of the fear of going to the dentist. He lo he's so he's like really passionate about, about his job. And then one of the theme, one of the room themes is, um, it's a new one. And it's like an opera thing because he's a really big opera fan. He's just a really poetic kind of guy. And he wants his wife to be the first one to see it. His wife, you know, lays down in the chair and that's basically when hell breaks loose. He like ties her up, gets her high on life, because, but to the point where he doesn't lose her. Um, she needs to feel everything. He puts this thing in her mouth that like holds her up. And he starts slowly pulling out her teeth one by one. Now this is off screen, but he cuts he cuts out her tongue. And um, as the movie goes along, he starts torturing more patients. He um tortures the neighbor girl that the that um the poor guy fucked. And like he's doing right in front of um the the assistant. This is getting the assistant gets uh, more suspicious as the movie goes along. Also. And, um, what else spoils can I say about the plot? Because there's not much said about the plot. Um, I think it's a pretty decent movie. I, I, actually, it's one of my favorites. I, I'm, you know, I have to admit that. I think Corbin Burson gives off some fantastic performances. Dr. Alan Feinstone. To me, it's one of his best performances because he's so dis sadistic in his role. Um, all the performances are, you know, they're not 
ter- I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not that really good. But you know, it's a good. I guess I guess it, it is a B movie. It is a really brutal torture flick, though. I think it's a lot better than Hostel. I know it's kind of weird comparing to Hostel, but it is a torture flick. I'm not gonna say torture porn because it's fucking retarded. Um, the effects are outstanding. I have never seen like you know a camera like well, well they really go in, but like. You actually get to see like insides of the patient's mouths and how he's torturing them. You know, he pulls out their teeth. He um, he like drills into their teeth and like almost turns the tooth and the teeth into powder. Um, the they um, the otter IRS guy um, he um fucking tortures that guy. He like slowly opens his jaw with this thing. You can just hear the crunching of his jaw. He starts like just fucking fucking his with his teeth. Um. The movie's budget, um, I think it has, you know, probably, probably an average budget, um, I was really impressed with the sound, like, almost everything had, like, a sound reactor, which is really cool, and it sounded really realistic, um, and the cool thing is, and, um, it really portrays the dentist well, like, of course, almost everybody's been to the dentist, so, if you got a fear of the dentist, this will make it even worse, because it's so accurate. And Corbin, Ber- Corbin Bernstein, he plays like, when, when Dr. Feinstein's, you know, just normal dentist, he plays that perfectly. This is one of his best roles, as I said. Um, but the writing is, you know, the screenplay is pretty good, but, you know, it's really nothing special, but, you know, you can't really ask for anything else, like, um, for this type of movie. It's not like, you know, super, like, you know, witty or intelligent, but, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to ask for that, for this, for, you know, for a torture flick like this one, um, but yeah, the direction is really well. Brian Usina, he also directed, um, I think, um, some of the reanimator, reanimator films, reanimator film, reanimated. Fuck, I can't remember the fucking name. Yeah, reanim. Sorry, it's like four a.m. in the morning. Reanimator. He directed some of those sequels. Um, can't really call what else he directed, but. Yeah, and he also directed The Dentist too. So the direction is uh, really well done. Um, hmm. There's not much features on this except a trailer and some filmographies, which nobody even cares about those anymore because they're all on my IMDb. Um, I would say only check this out if you just you're if you're in the mood for a torture flick that you just really just want to, you know, just switch off your mind. Um, it has really good pacing, so. The hour and a half goes by really fast. Um, it is pretty cheesy, but it's not as cheesy as the dentist too. The dentist too, I mean, it's good, but it's not as brutal, and um, it's even more cheesier. And it doesn't. I don't think the end. Like the first one doesn't mean to be cheesy, but the second one does. So the second one has plenty of dark humor, while this one is just um, it does have its quick. It does have its like its you know, its small moments of humor, but you no, know, it mostly stays on top of the brutality. So um. I think you should definitely check this out if you know you're in you know, something like just really just a different type of gore if that makes any sense. Um, I think this is ridiculously overrated. I really think this deserves a better release than than um Trimark gave out. Um, yeah, not much to say about it. Um, I give it about a seven point five out of ten just because I've I just love this movie so fucking much. I don't know why, but I just love it so much. So, um, this is Jay Widow 91 and subscribe to the Scat House and subscribe to Jay Widow 91. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye bye.